Hey everyone, it's Allison in my violin studio today. I want to talk a little bit about bowing. Um, I did a clip previously on the bow hold. Um, usually, typically, when we start the violin in Suzuki, um, I can't speak for other methods, I use the Suzuki more, um, we encourage people to use a limited portion of the bow. And depending on the student, that might be for a couple of years or it might be for a couple of weeks. Um, so the point at which you're ready to move beyond that, um, then it starts to get a little more complicated. It, it's quite tricky to play at the frog and it's quite tricky to play it at the tip. And to some degree it requires uh, uh, um, some, some degree of sophistication in your bow hand. And as your bow hand develops, you become able to do more um, detail. It. But I just want to show you, there's something which is really, really helpful uh, when you start using the full bow, which is to understand the two halves. Technically, you know, keep in mind that the body is, uh, the way our joints work, uh, we have a lot of kind of pendulum movement. We've got from the shoulder to the elbow, and we've got from the elbow down, and then we've got from the wrist, there's another arch, and then all of these guys can all kind of make curvy shapes of their own. So it's actually very difficult for us to, to move a bow in a straight line, but it's possible. It's just kind of a little bit of an engineering wonder. And generally people uh, get confused if you talk about it from a terribly technical aspect. So I'm not going to talk about exactly how your joints need to line up. I just want to show you a basic technique, which I think helps everybody. Um, also, we want to, aside from the problem of drawing a straight bow, we need to develop our sense of rhythm. And um, I find, and this is perhaps personal, but I find that the best way to have good rhythm in the violin is to delegate rhythm to the bow. So if we can start at a very early point in teaching your bow to move in a very specifically rhythmical way, it, it, um, <laughs> it really pays off. So. If you place your bow in the middle, I mean the middle of the bow, on the A string, doesn't matter. You should, I, I kind of define the middle of the bow as being the spot where your elbow will be at a 90 degree angle, okay? So when you place, and that, I call this the box. Uh, I think that might be a Suzuki thing, I'm not sure. I think all teachers teach this to some degree, but imagine there's one side, two, three, and a little bit of an imaginary. So can you see that square box? Good. When we play from the middle to the upper half, to the tip, what you do is the bottom of the box opens from the elbow. And don't worry, if, that, if you can't comfortably go all the way to the tip, I have a personal theory that <laughs> only people with long arms use the tip, but um, I'm probably wrong. Don't worry about the last couple inches, you'll get there when your technique gets more sophisticated. All right. And now bring your forearm back in. Your shoulder is not working. Your upper arm is not moving. It is here. Imagine a little, a little guy, like in kids' play, little engineer. He's going to bring your arm back, okay? There we go. And stop when you get to that 90-degree angle. Let's do that again. Okay. Now, to go from the middle, or your 90-degree angle, the box position, to the frog, what we want to do is instead of, remember what I said about the pendulums? We were, we were using the arm as a pendulum from the elbow hinge. Now we leave this alone and let's go up to the shoulder. Now let's use this whole crooked thing. Okay. Actually, it's, it, it will continue to come in a little bit, but the important part here is that the upper arm comes up. It's not, it's not as easy to visualize as this. But now let this rise. This forearm will continue to come in a little bit. Okay. So, put that on a violin. If we start in the middle, now I'm going to let my upper arm rise as this, Thomas the Engineer, I always think of Thomas the Tank. You know those little, little wooden people with the, the little baseball hats? I always imagine, okay, he's here. This is the point, 
that's making it's not the hand the hand doesn't play the bow the hand is just kind of stuck there but and we'll talk about that another day but this is the point so this comes in dragging all the rest of it with it okay and the only way that it can do that is if the upper arm comes up and your elbow knows how far up in the air your elbow is okay it, it, there is a school of violin playing in which the arm stays down by the side, um, but I think that's mostly a historical thing, and I think you'll find anybody who tries to play that way has a, a limited range of the kind of music you can do effectively by keeping your arm down. Generally, you'll have very small sound with your arm down, so get your arm up in the air. Okay, so let's, let's try. Place your, your bow in the middle. And, and open and close the forearm. And now lift your elbow and come in. Up and down. Up and down. Okay, so now let's start at the tip. Are you with me? So the first thing we do from the tip is bring, come in. Bring your forearm in and stop. And now continue upwards. There we go. Now we go down and out. In and up. Down and out. In and up. Down and out. Okay, now let's not stop in the middle. Let's just smooth it out. So we get in and Do an A major scale. Each note, you might think this is really slow, but if you're thinking about the parts of your bow, your mind will be busy, so it actually, it's, you don't have time to get bored. So start with an open A at the frog, and we start with a down and out, first finger, in and up, second finger, down and out, third finger, in and up, over to E string, down. First finger in and up. Second finger down and up. Third finger in and up. Now let's repeat the top note. Three and out. Second finger in and up and down. Out. In. Up. Over to A. Swing your left arm. Drop it three. Out. Down and up. Uh, sorry. In. First finger down, up, and in, up. Okay, we can go into a lot more detail, but I think that's entirely adequate for one lesson, as it were. So uh, play around with that, do your scales, and uh, try and try and hear. Actually, oh, that's one thing I did. It's not a bad thing if you kind of hear that there are two parts in that bow stroke. So your stroke is not a dead thing. It's a live thing. Okay? And then you really hear that then your playing starts to have a little bit of spring, a little bit of uh, stretchiness, texture. There's the word I'm looking for. Okay? That, that'll make you a really, mm, gives you some good sound. Okay? Have fun. Bye.